So what's the first thing that pops into your mind when you think of students bringing their own devices to class? Are we talking about toys or are we talking about tools here? Are you thinking distracted students or engaged students? Let me introduce you to a phenomenal teacher who's using the devices that his students already have to create a dynamic and connected 21st century classroom. Gary Abu teaches chemistry and physics over at Gross Point North High School. And what he's done is he's created a classroom where his students are actively using their own devices in their learning. But the most important piece is that his students are also taking ownership of their learning. And they've discovered how to use these devices as powerful learning tools rather than just entertaining toys. In this Ramsey Connected Educator Series Showcase, Gary's going to share with us some of the tools that he uses to keep his students connected and engaged. We hope this sparks some great ideas for how you could tweak this to work in your own classroom. And as always, enjoy! Hi, I'm Gary Abood, and I'm going to be talking with you about the Bring Your Own Device Classroom. I teach physics and chemistry at Gross Point North High School in Gross Point, Michigan. And today we'll be talking about how to take these devices that students already bring with them and turn them into powerful tools that support teaching and learning. If you'd like to get in touch or follow up after the presentation, the link to the slides, my website, and my contact information is at the bottom of your screen right now. Let's get started. Many people ask me what Bring Your Own Device or BYOD means. And very simply put, it's just taking the devices that students already bring with them and using them to support teaching and learning as tools in the classroom. A lot of people would also ask, why would you want to do such a thing? And this is a very natural question. Devices are often distractions to students, but there are really a lot of benefits for them as well. And if you use them correctly, you can take those distractions and turn them into a tool. You can use the devices that students already have instead of having to provide one for them to teach digital responsibility, create an opportunity for collaboration, and eventually move towards a paperless classroom. Some natural concerns arise about Bring Your Own Device Classrooms, and I'm hoping that today some of the things we talk about will help address any of your concerns. Some of those may just be as simple as devices typically distract students from a lesson, so how could they possibly be productive? But devices really do come in a lot of different sizes and shapes and can do so much to support the classroom. Everything from projects and calculations to measurement and portfolios. Managing a classroom where you bring your own device can seem daunting, but actually if you follow three elements that include creating classroom norms that support the use of devices, having a flexible attitude between students and the teacher, and also having a process by which the devices are included in the classroom culture, I think you'll find any BYOD implementation very successful. Types of devices that students are bringing with them include cell phones and smartphones. They also range from tablets and other e-readers to smaller devices such as the iPod Touch. And with any device that students are bringing, it's going to require a shift in the way you design lessons. Starting with learning outcomes and moving towards instructional strategies as we normally would as teachers, you're going to have to start thinking about what devices are present in the classroom and what applications using those devices can best support teaching and learning. Now I've gone through and looked for a lot of different applications and ways to use devices, and there are a countless number of apps out there. Some of the essential ones that I've found successful for my classroom include the list that you'll see on this slide as well. A number one go-to application for us using devices in the classroom would be Google Drive. This year our school has given each student a Google account, and what that allows them to do is to keep their documents and to use documents from class all in one place that's kept online. This has allowed me to run a paperless classroom. Worksheets, tests, notes can all go on Google Drive and students can access them with their device. But another great benefit of Google Drive is that students can work together and edit a document collaboratively at the same time. And this allows them to do projects and work together in ways that they never could before, giving each student a voice at the same time. At the end of the day, you could take this and use it in any classroom that you might have students working on a presentation. And it doesn't just have to be mobile devices, it can also use computers. Another great feature of mobile devices allows students to keep notes and to even share notes with the teacher. Evernote is a free application that works across devices and over the internet to allow students to keep track of notes and notebooks in one place. 
They can also share those notes with other people, and the teacher can use those notes to share with students. One thing that we've also found really helpful for this is to use them as digital portfolios. We have students do a project and they compile their report in Evernote. They'll have a notebook with several notes for each section of the report, and that can easily be shared with the teacher. Likewise, when the teacher takes notes in class, they can upload them to Evernote, and students can combine teacher and student notes in their own notebook. Penultimate is an app for the iPad that allows you to do handwritten and picture notes that will easily integrate with the Evernote app. This allows a teacher to take handwritten notes as they might do on a smart board or on a whiteboard, but to integrate them into a digital way that students can keep track of them on their Evernote account. A diagramming and annotation app that also works with Evernote to help it become a more comprehensive note-taking application for students is called Skitch. It allows them to take a picture, a screenshot, or a blank canvas and include text, arrows, and other shapes to help annotate or diagram on the screen. These notes can then be saved into an Evernote notebook and shared with others. Some devices such as iPads allow for students and teachers to create screencasts, such as the one that you're watching right now. One of the great note-taking applications that allows this to happen on the iPad is called Show Me. What you can do is annotate what you're talking about along with what you're writing on the screen and create short videos. I've had students create videos to do a performance assessment to show that they understand how to solve problems or how to work through something. Along with that goes keeping class media. These are photos or videos that are taken by students or the teacher of activities that happen in class. It can help create a digital archive of what's going on and provide an access point for students who are absent or who are studying to refer back to what happened in class. Dropbox is a free application that works on your desktop or on a mobile device to allow you to keep and access all of your media and other files. Lino is an application that allows for a common workspace, a corkboard actually, where students and teachers can post notes, photos, and videos about a discussion or what's going on in class. It can be used to archive an activity or a lesson, or for a back channel discussion between students while the teacher is doing a lesson. This can be referred back to later on in the application or by the web, and stays there for as long as the user has an account. One of the great mobile device applications that I've seen in my own classroom is the ability for cell phones and iPod touches and tablets to serve as student response devices. Many schools and many teachers have experienced uh, using clickers in the classroom, and a lot of schools will go out and buy sets which cost thousands of dollars. Maintaining the software and keeping track of all these devices can be very difficult, but by using applications that are online or app-based, such as Socrative or Infuse Learning, the devices can actually become clickers and they can become student response devices. This allows for students to participate in a lesson or to complete a formative assessment that can help the teacher know where everyone's understanding level is during a lesson. If applications or web is not possible, one of the great workarounds is SMS-based text voting. Something like a polleverywhere.com can allow for the teacher to create surveys or quizzes that students can take by simply sending a text message to a designated number. Another great use of mobile devices, especially if they have a camera and can run apps, would be the QR code reader. Documents, answer keys, web links, and other media can be shared by using a QR code, which quickly distributes things and gets students to one place at a quick time on their device by sharing this little code. There was another great Connected Educators series video about QR codes in the classroom that you might want to check out if this seems like something that you'd enjoy. Really important to consider with Bring Your Own Device would be social media in the classroom. Some things that I've found really useful for my students have been to have them create a reflective blog each week. They can access this from their device and update it a little bit each day so that on the weekend they can think about what happened in class, look back to things they may not have remembered while they're studying, and use it as a way to document and chronicle their learning. On Twitter you can perform chats or have short writing prompts every day or every so often for students to respond to. On Google+, students can create groups, they can also do video chats, or you can even live stream things that happen in your classroom on YouTube. 
Edmodo is a wonderful site that's Facebook-like in nature. It's a learning management system that allows students and teachers a secure place to share ideas, share files, and to converse. Mobile devices also have now come to have the possibility to display things wirelessly. One such device that allows this to happen is the Apple TV. The Apple TV cooperates through AirPlay with iOS devices and allows anyone to display things on a projector using the Apple TV from their iOS device. This has allowed students to wirelessly present, show their thinking from a worksheet or something that they're doing, or to ask great questions but by presenting an illustration along with it. If you don't exactly have an Apple TV accessible to you, one other option that you might be able to find that could work really well is the Reflector app for PC or Mac. If your teacher computer is already hooked up to a projector, using this app will allow you to do the AirPlay over your computer, and students and teachers using iOS devices can still project what they're seeing on their screen. There are numerous workarounds that can help you tailor a bring-your-own-device policy to your classroom, your students, and what you're looking to accomplish in teaching and learning. For several different objectives, such as one-to-one -one device interaction, there exist a couple of options that you can choose. If not every student has a device, you can tailor the activities so that they are small group in nature, and maybe two, three, or four students are available to use one device and share it in common. Many other workarounds can help you to tailor a program so that it fits for your needs. When it comes down to it, devices can really be powerful learning tools. And if you're looking for some more resources to get started, besides this presentation, I would definitely check out Learning in Hand. A great resource is a guy by the name of Tony Vincent, who runs this site and was one of the pioneers of mobile learning. Another great thing to check out would be to think, how can applications for the iOS or Android system support the teaching and learning needs of your classroom? Someone has gone to the lengths of creating Bloom's Taxonomy as it relates to these apps. And you can check out the schrockguide.net for some more information there. There are many things to consider for the Bring Your Own Device Classroom, and all of these things can seem really overwhelming. But I'm so excited that the product that I've turned out with my students and having these devices go from distraction to productive tool. They use them for everything from note taking to keeping track of things that are happening in class to documenting what they do on projects and also communicating and collaborating with one another. The 21st century learning skills that result from all of this are essential for the students as they come out of education today. If you're looking for ways that you can get started right away in your classroom, you can survey your students to find out what kind of devices they have to begin, but then any of these eight ways are great ideas for getting started. Even something as simple as taking QR codes and attaching them to your answer keys for worksheets or other assignments may give students a nice way to sort of ease into using their devices in your classroom. Things like Quizlet.com or the Quizlet app would allow students to practice vocabulary or other terms for your class on their mobile device. This can be a great way to get students using these devices, working together, and finding positive results for them in the teaching and learning environment. Ultimately, it's not about the device, but it's about what you do with it. If you have any questions about this presentation or are looking to follow up about it, feel free to get in touch by email or on Twitter. But otherwise, thanks a lot for listening, and I hope you've enjoyed this presentation.